Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. The Russians again uh, launched an attack on the Ukrainian infrastructure in West Ukraine, which I call uh, the Polish side of Ukraine. Uh, I uh, had a little conversation with uh, a Polish person, and uh, he said that actually Poland does not um does not want or polish people don't have any claims territorial claims on western ukraine and they are content as they are and so on i told him i don't believe that and uh, i have my information and i still do have my information and time will tell uh, i think as i said once the russians will start moving westward the poles will go will enter ukraine at the orders of al capone and take over their ancestral territories in western Ukraine. Uh, that will happen under the pretext of saving lives, protecting people uh, against uh, the possible Russian crimes, uh, you know, since the army, Red Army, moves westward. You'll see. But hey, uh, he said no, I said yes, and we'll see. Now what do we have here? We have an attack of the Russians, Russian attack, and not only that the Ukrainians blew off all the incoming object but somehow like always always after a russian attack and when the ukrainians report oh, we downed all this all that somehow i don't know uh, three oblasts and five hundred thousand people don't have electricity because of the debris the debris of the drones of the missiles that were shot just rained down on the exact location where they fucked up the um transport of uh, energy or whatever distribution of energy that's why that tells me these guys are lying but what are they supposed to do say that it was a success no but nevertheless that's a way to know when the next day they tell me the destruction of the debris okay all right let's read this article the new voice of ukraine april 18th 2024 Russia attacks energy sites in Ukraine's western Ivano, Frankivsk and Khmelnytsky oblast in mass drone attack. So we have a we have two maps and information. Now I know that in Khmelnytsky oblast the Ukrainians have I think the only military airfield that would accommodate the Prissy uh, F-16s. Why Prissy F-16s? Because uh, I know that the main the main reason you have a weapon is to work, right? To defend yourself, or you know, but it has to work. That's the first requirement: to work, to be reliable from that point of view. Now, reliability could be extended because you say, well, it works one time. One shot, boom. Nah, I don't want that one. I want something that resists, I don't know, forever. Well, it, no, no, no such thing. But something that, I don't know, you can put it in the sand, you can put it in the water, you can put it in the sun, you can put it in the rain, like AK-47s. All right, so, reliability. F so, if you have a weapon that you can't use it because it's raining, or you can't fly it because, I don't know, the temperature is too low or too high, that limits your ability to fight. Therefore, you don't want that garbage. So F-16s, first, they need a longer, not that, a longer uh, takeoff uh, airfield or strip. Why? I don't know, but they need longer. I don't, I don't, it doesn't have the, it doesn't have sufficient power. It needs longer to take off. So I guess the, the power versus the ability to, you know, support um, its, so mm, anyway, so that's one. The other one. It needs to be clean, like flat, flat. Let's start with the flat first. Very, I, I mean, they all have to be flat. No, 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 no. Flat, like, I don't know if you've ever been to an uh, airfield, but in where I come from, in Russian airfields, if you watch videos, for instance, and if you haven't been into one, you find out that sometimes that's in growing grass when those uh, concrete portions that form the airfield are located, that's grass. F-16 cannot do that. It has to be flat because it has a, it has a very um, soft landing gear. 
very weak. That is when it lands, breaks, or it's a possibility to do that. Or when it takes off, it's not good. There's a second one. And the third, so you can, you have to be flat and you have to mop it and you have to shine it. You have to make sure it's like that in a war. And then the third one, it's the F-16's intake, air intake, you know, it's where uh, the uh, engine gets, sucks its air. It's very low and very big. Big is not always good because in this case it is low, close to the surface and they're afraid that this could suck in any debris that might be in a war zone on an airfield. So these three are the main, thing, main reasons why Kmelnitsky has an one, I think, one as far as I remember, airfield that can accommodate F-16s. And the Russians keep bombarding that area. The other thing is, I don't think the F-16s, when or if they're going to be active, they will be flying from Ukraine. I think they will be flying, will be flying from Romania, from Poland. These will be their areas where they will take off. And the Russians probably will hit the airfields inside those NATO countries and the NATO will claim it's been attacked. That's how the story will go. Or will claim they don't fly from our airfields. Even if the Russians provide you evidence or anything, no, that's something fake. So let's see what happened. Let's look at the damage, if any. Explosions were heard in Ivano, let me put my goggles, Ivano Frankivsk and Kmelnitsky Oblast as Russian troops launched a wave of Shahed kamikaze drones against Russia's Western Oblast overnight on April 18th. So Ivano Frankivsk was, let's look at the map. Here you have, here you have it. So by this, I don't uh, read Kyrillix, but I know that I have another map ready for you and I know Kmelnitsky is here and Ivano Frankovsk is here. So looking at this little map is should be right this area. Right here, Ivano Pakarap, Kmelnitsky, this here, these two. And this is, I think, at least this is the part that is the minimum required by our Polish friends. That's what I will claim forever. Why? I know. I know, I mean, uh, history has evidence how they came even here. They came, they, the Poles, came here, right here, right here. I have evidence, historical evidence, not me. So yeah, they came to take other people's lands right here. So yeah, that's something that, oh, it happened 4,000, 4, uh, 400 years ago. Well, not only. So anyway, I think they want all this, but I will not get all this because the Russians will smack them back. Probably will go end up here somewhere, right here. If, if the Russians will allow them. Let's move on. So these two, um, Pelnitsky and Ivano Papapap. So here I showed you, it's actually Kmelnitsky and right here. Very interesting because Rheinmetall, that uh, German manufacturer company, like uh, Lockheed Martin or Raytheon or Boeing, big one, this is for Germany, said that it will build right here in Zakarpatia. Here is Zakarpatia that uh, Hungary wants. Only Romanians don't want anything that was theirs, but hey, that's okay. But they could be sneaky, as they always are. So they, uh, Rheinmetall said he's going to build a factory right where my hand is. You see that little thing over there? I'm going to make it like this right here they said we're gonna have it right here when my little strong hand is why so the russians cannot come with their missiles to hit it unless they cross the territory of romania and coming like this it's easy to put some batteries here that they say they will uh, locate deploy to destroy the incoming russian missiles so it's easy to block something that you know it's going to come only from northeast but if the russians come from here oh that's violating the romanians uh uh, air and then uh, they will probably destroy them here, the Romanians. I have no doubt the Romanians will get involved. Uh, not Romanians, NATO, United States will activate the weasel. So I don't know, we'll see. But this, uh, pay attention on this little location in Zakarpatia or Transcarpatia right here. So let's go back to the article. No casualties have been yet reported. So, um, Ivano Frankivsk was Russia's main target of the attack. The Russians attempted to strike critical infrastructure objects with drones during the morning attack. 
and I'm quoting, all Shahed drones have been neutralized. She said, it's okay, by this evening we're gonna find out half of the um, Oblast has no electricity or something. <laughs> oh, my bad, even, even sooner. And I'm quoting, fires started during the falling debris, fortunately leading to no casualties. Emergency service services are on site, the situation is under control. Good. Several kamikaze drones were neutralized as dozens of drones, dozens of drones were spotted in western Ukraine. Prikarpatia, Prikarpatia did not escape the Russian threat either. Explosions rang out of Ivano Frankis, pop, pop, pop. Russia's Shahed drones were seen approaching the city from a southeastern direction a few minutes before the attack. Explosions were also heard in Khmelnytsky Oblast. Sus Suspion reported pop up up. Their forces reports about report about the attack came at about midnight as group of drone groups of drones were spotted maneuvering over Dnipropetrovsk, Poltava and Cherkasy Oblast. Probably this area right here. Alright, so let's see what else. Enemy tactical aviation was also operating in Ukraine's north east. So here is the report. The Russians launched dozens of drones and they said um, um, enemy tactical aviation was also operating in Ukraine's northeast. Well, that is what bombers uh, will we'll find out maybe tomorrow or later this afternoon. As of now, they didn't uh, su succeed. All, they said drones or everything. I think all drones. Where is that? Come on. All Shahed drones have been neutralized and it said dozens of drones. Dozens means at least uh, 2 multiplied by 12, which is at least 24, right? If they say do dozens, not 10 and 10. So here it is, my friend. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.